as a cook, I would like my crockpots to get along, but alas, they will always be rivals. Rival crock, okay. If I explain the joke, it's not funny. Hello, and welcome to a video of crock pot dinners, slow cooker dinners, Hamilton Beach mini oven dinners, whatever you want to call the little slow cooker thing. I always call them a crock pot even though I realize that's the brand, but what are you going to do? I have four amazing, very, very fast throw and go recipes for you. And in case you didn't know, the first three comments on today's video actually won a $50 Amazon gift card. So if you don't want to miss out on the next time I do a little surprise giveaway, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I post a new video. And you winners, if you want to go buy yourself a new crock pot or a slow cooker, I think that would be a great use of your money. Or you know what, you can buy whatever you want. Of course, the exact crock pots I will be using and the recipes that I use for this video will all be down in the description box below. Hang on to your hats. Let's get slow cooking. Our first meal is Italian sausage and vegetables. And anytime you put spicy Italian sausage in a dish, I'm pretty much gonna like it. I have one package of spicy Italian sausages going down in the bottom. Let's straighten those up a little nicer. <laughs> and I'm literally going to throw everything else on top. I have four small zucchinis, one small onion, and two yellow potatoes. All of this is going on top. Chopping these veggies is really the only prep work. 128 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes, whatever brand you prefer. Now for the spices. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. How cute is this black measuring spoon, right? I just got these from Target. How cute are these? Some crushed red pepper flakes. Now I'm a fan of crushed red pepper flakes, but if you are on the shy side, since we did use spicy sausage, you can go on the low side or leave it out. That is totally up to you. Some dried oregano and dried basil. I will top mine with a little bit of kosher salt because while the sausage is quite spicy and salty, none of the vegetables are and we can always add more later. Lid on and let it run on hot for six hours. What's nice about this recipe is that you can substitute any of the vegetables or the sausage for one that you prefer. For this recipe, we'll start by mixing the sauce that goes on top of the meat, which is one can of tomato sauce. Make sure you rinse that out with water to get the rest of that. One packet of onion soup mix. Two tablespoons of oil of your choice. I'm just gonna use this one two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And I've had this little sherry vinegar. I will do this entire little bottle and one tablespoon of this, just so I can get rid of it. One teaspoon ground oregano. Yes, I'm measuring today. Can you believe it? People think I don't know how to estimate the size, but I promise, I've been using these for so long, I'm pretty good at guessing what it looks like in my hand. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, I will do a heaping one, and a half a teaspoon of just plain black pepper. And this one's super, super ground, so this will be more spicy than a coarser ground pepper, so I'll go a little shy on that one. Give it some whiskey business and set it to the side and we'll put the meat in the crock pot. I have three round steaks in this crock pot and I am so excited to do this recipe because round steak is not my favorite cut of meat. I would much prefer a big roast or stew meat or something like that over this one, but I think this recipe is really going to transform these into something tender and delicious. On top of all of our round steaks, here comes the sauce that we mixed up a little bit before. Now, I'm no expert in Italian cooking, but do they eat potatoes as often as people from Idaho do? I'm not sure, but this recipe does call to place eight potatoes whole like this on top. So make sure you give them a wash and probably pierce them with a fork because they're gonna essentially turn into baked potatoes. Cook on low for eight to 10 hours or high for five to six hours, depending on the temperature of your crock pot. Mine tends to run a little on the hot side, but this is round steak after all, and it does need to be cooked a lot longer than a lot of other cuts of meat. So basically just until your steak and your potatoes are tender. I ended 
ended up taking everything out of the crock pot and mixing in a cornstarch and water slurry, stirred it all together and turned it back on high just to thicken up my gravy a little bit. And then when it came time to plate, I used these really, really large bowls and I put one potato and a good amount of steak slices in them and then poured the gravy all over the top. This was so good. Next up is some Creole chicken and this was a hit at my house. So popular, everybody adored it. This is definitely a staple in the rotation from now on. So I took all the skin off of the chicken thighs and sprinkled all of it with a Cajun seasoning. Tony's is my favorite one. <coughs> I never sprayed myself. In this recipe, it calls for the rice to be cooked in the crock pot with everything else. I'm gonna miss these. <laughs> it's that dang Tony's. However, I don't wanna do it that way. I would like to cook my rice separately and then put the sauce and chicken on top after we're done. So we will set this to the side and you can cook it later in your rice cooker or Instant Pot or on the stove or in the oven or however you like to cook rice. Instead, three cups of your favorite type of broth. I'm using vegetable broth because it's in my fridge and I want to get rid of it. Chicken broth is also fine. One diced green bell pepper, two large diced tomatoes, one can of drained and rinsed red beans, two teaspoons of Cajun seasoning. Uncle Tony's is my favorite. You can pick this up. I've seen it basically everywhere. Walmart, the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna eyeball that. So you just basically use it like salt, like you would salt. Give that a little stirry stir and put all of our chicken thighs on top sitting in the liquid. Lid on and cook it on low for about seven hours or high for five to six hours. I will see you then. For this taco meatloaf, we will start by mixing in a glass bowl the following ingredientes. Two cups of crushed tortilla chips. I have some blue corn ones, aren't those cute? One cup of shredded cheddar cheese. One cup of your favorite salsa. Two eggs. You could also use egg substitute if you want. One package of taco seasoning. And if you like olives, go ahead and throw those in. I think olives are the most vile thing on the planet, so I will be leaving those out. Next up, you will crumple in two pounds of your favorite ground beef or ground uh, meat that you prefer. Mix it well, and when everything is mixed together and squished, form it into a loaf type of a shape. Whatever, whatever shape you think a loaf looks like. To make the serving process easier, here in my six quart crock pot, I have some aluminum foil and I've sprayed the entire thing with cooking spray. And in comes our meat loaf. Lid on and cook on low for three to four hours. And that's all she wrote. Of course, what is meatloaf without a little ketchup-y glaze? So I have some ketchup, a little bit of brown sugar, and I'm going to top that with your favorite hot sauce. You can use Tabasco, you can use Sriracha, although that doesn't read like Mexican inspired to me. So I am using this taco, like spicy taco sauce, which actually ended up really tasty. So I would recommend going with that one. Stir it together, pour it on top, and then you can serve it however you want. You can serve it meatloaf style with mashed potatoes, or you can serve this sliced on kind of like a salad, almost like a taco inspired salad with a taco meatloaf. The absolute stunners, winners out of this batch of four recipes were the Creole chicken was like mind blowingly good. I swear to you, it's the Uncle Tony's. You put Uncle Tony's in anything and it's gonna make it delicious. And the taco meatloaf, and that could just be my family because anything that is taco inspired, they're pretty much gonna love. It was essentially a sure thing. One more reminder, all of the recipes are down below. If you wanna go check them out and try them out on your family, I'd love to know what you think. And you need to subscribe because I have two more crock pot easy throw together videos coming at you in the next couple weeks. I think you are not going to want to miss them. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Christine out.